Hi there, this is Josh from Literary Gladiators, and we made it to 2017. Uh, Literary Gladiators is approaching their third year uh, on uh, YouTube. Uh, it took us a few months to uh, find out that there was a booktube, but uh, February 11th will be the uh, third anniversary of when we released our very first episode in The Road Not Taken. But today I thought I would use this video to talk about uh, my reading expectations, uh, things we plan to do with the channel during 2017, and I'm going to show you my uh, TBR for the month. Uh, it is a special themed TBR, so it's something to look forward to. With regard to uh, my personal uh, reading, I, plan I have uh, different uh, authors or kinds of authors or kinds of books that I would like to read. Uh, during this year. Uh, there is uh, Chaim Potok is the first one, uh, and he is somebody that I'm uh, reading right now, uh, but I added a lot of his books to my collection. Uh, he talks a lot about uh, Hasidic and Orthodox uh, Judaism in his uh, novels. Uh, he, he was actually, in fact, a rabbi. Uh, and so I thought I would read at least one thing that he's written, uh, because I like to... I have this habit of uh, finding an author that interests me and then uh, collecting uh, everything that they've written. So, with that being said, I like to at least uh, have uh, what they have written read. I do want to get back into uh, Stephen King. I generally tend to read at least one book of his a year. I started two of them. Uh, my goal is to finish at least uh, Salem's Lot. Uh, Dance Macat Rob is uh, something that I started, but I may want to get a little bit more rounded in the horror genre, or uh, grow with th thick skin and uh, come to the conclusion that I may uh, be spoiled uh, uh, about the conclusions of particular works of horror. Uh, but otherwise, uh, I do want to read more from Stephen King because he has a lot to offer that I have not approached just yet. I would like to read some more Grisham. I read four of his books previously. Uh, last year, I read A Time to Kill, which made it onto my top ten. And I want to explore... Uh, a lot more of what he has to offer. James Patterson's on my list. Uh, the last time I read a Patterson novel was in 2010, so it's been seven. This is this would be seven years uh, that I uh, have not read any of his books. Uh, but I do want to continue the Alex Cross series. So Pop Goes the Weasel is the front runner. You can tell that I'm not a, a, a series person, uh, but with Alex Cross, uh, the first four that I read were uh, enjoyable. Dean Koontz is somebody I want to get back to. I read two of his novels, uh, House of Thunder and Servants of Twilight. And uh, he is just, I don't know where I want to uh, continue with him. I may read... Uh, his Frankenstein series, or maybe something uh, recent, but we'll have to see. Uh, Agatha Christie, somebody that I would like to read more from. Uh, I know that uh, Ari introduced me to her. Uh, I read The Murder of Roger Ackroyd to prepare for uh, the discussion of the work, and uh, he's suggested a lot of others. Uh, the Murder on the Orient Express, uh, and then I also uh, would like to pick up uh, And Then There Were None, because I hear a lot about it on book two. In addition to those six names, uh, there's uh, other uh, people that I would like to read. Uh, I'd like to read a horror writer that I have not read before. I have a uh, decent uh, collection of what Bentley Little has I have just about all of the... Uh, earlier works of uh, Brian Smith, uh, Gord Rollo, uh, and a few others. Uh, 
I'd like to read a science fiction pioneer, uh, whether it be Arthur C. Clarke, Isaac Asimov, uh, Robert, he Robert A. Heinlein, H.G. Uh, Wells, Jules Verne, uh, even Frank Herbert, uh, even though Dune may be a bit more of a commitment, uh, but we'll have to see. I'd like to read at least one. I'd like to read a work of ancient world literature. Uh, probably the frontrunner for this one is uh, me completing uh, the complete Sappho that Willis Barnstone put together. But there are a lot of other uh, works uh, of ancient world literature that have my attention. And I would also like to read a, a work of nonfiction in a topic that uh, interests me, but I don't have much of a, uh, a greater understanding about. It could be anything. Uh, I'm going to be reading more uh, presidential biographies, but I think for this one, uh, I'm looking into uh, a topic that I have not covered with regard to nonfiction. And then, uh, in general, I would like to check out some more uh, short story, poetry, and fairy tale collections. Uh, so we'll have to see how well that goes. And uh, during this year, we're planning a few uh, themed reading months. Uh, we may have more, but right now we have four that we are going forward with. Uh, this month is going to be Jewish January, where I'm planning to read uh, multiple works of uh, Jewish literature or nonfiction works about uh, Jewish people and Judaism. Uh, the month of February is going to be President's Month, where I'm planning to read presidential biographies or maybe in some cases uh, works that were written by uh, U.S. presidents uh, themselves. I know that Jimmy Carter has published a novel. Well, I think now he has two novels. John Quincy Adams has a poetry collection. And then some of them have uh, essays and autobiographies and memoirs that they have published. But uh, month of April, I plan to read uh, poetry collections. Uh, it'll be Poetry Month, which in uh, the United States, it is uh, Poetry Month. Uh, so I'm looking to get into uh, a few more uh, collections, whether they are original or uh, complete collections, uh, which I own many of. And the month of June, we plan on doing uh, LGBTQ plus awareness month, which Austin's going to be uh, coordinating because I think that he would really uh, take this one off the ground. Uh, I'll be, I'll still be uh, taking part, but Austin's going to be doing uh, much more of the hosting duties uh, when it comes to individual video releases. If you would like to take part in these, we would really be happy to have you on board. You can put together your TBRs. Uh, maybe if uh, you wanted to do a, uh, a buddy read or a read along, uh, uh, feel free. Uh, we'd love to have you on board to uh, take part in our uh, themed reading months. Also for the channel, we, we plan to release uh, the uh, remainder of Season 5, which is going to stretch out until uh, June 16th. And then we're going to start working on Season 6, which we plan to film 30 episodes over the summer, and we're going to be releasing them in starting in September. Our seventh season, we're planning to uh, begin taping in January of 2018. I had brought up that we're going to be doing uh, Jewish January on our channel, uh, so I thought I would share my TBR for the month of January. Uh, I have four works that fit the theme of Jewish January. I hope to get to each of them. We'll have to see, but it's a goal. And then there's one work that I just plan to read in general. The first one that I'm uh, reading, I got a little bit of a head start and started it uh, on uh, New Year's Eve in the evening. 
but that is The Chosen by Chaim Potok. Uh, I made mention of the fact that I would like to read uh, something that he's written, and this is the one that I chose because it seems like, uh, to me, it feels like a good starting place for it's the one that is the most uh, familiar, I suppose. Uh, but uh, this follows a young teenager, I want to say. Uh, his name is uh, Reuven Malter. He's the one telling the story, and he talks about uh, uh, growing up as uh, uh, an Orthodox Jew. And he becomes, uh, he meets and uh, forms some kind of uh, uh, relationship. I don't know if it is uh, a friendship or a rivalry or something uh, dysfunctional uh, in that matter uh, with a, a, a boy named uh, Danny Sanders who is a uh, Hasidic Jew. And uh, both of their fathers have uh, major positions in uh, their uh, Jewish community. Uh, they come from different neighborhoods and uh, the two of them meet at a softball game and it gets very competitive. Uh, but despite the fact that uh, there are very strict uh, requirements uh, in this particular in in what they can and cannot do with regard to education and activities, uh, it'll be really interesting to see uh, how this uh, novel progresses and uh, the relationship that uh, forms between uh, Reuven and Danny. Next thing that I'm going to be picking up is a work of nonfiction from a lady that you may very well be familiar with. And uh, that is Talk Dirty Yiddish by Eileen Schneider. It is pretty much a, uh, a guide for both beginners and uh, interested people uh, that want to learn more about Yiddish uh, words, uh, Yiddish slang, Yiddish expressions. Uh, and it, it covers everything from uh, wor words that we may be familiar with uh, to those uh, not so much. Uh, and there's also the, uh, the dirty part where uh, it talks about the different curse words, whether it be uh, those that we're familiar with or those that uh, are not so uh, familiar uh, and uh, Eileen actually uh, autographed this for me. So, it was very nice of her. Uh, she's coming out with a new uh, novel in the uh, Rabbi Aviva Cohen series uh, called Young Killer. And I'm hoping to get my hands on that. Uh, when I get my hands on it, it's probably going to be something I read uh, almost immediately. Next thing that I got is another work of... Uh, Nonfiction, and it's also from a, a female uh, writer. Uh, it's quite something. I'm reading two male writers who wrote fiction, and two uh, female writers who, in this case, I'm reading nonfiction. The next one is something that I've been looking to get to for quite some time, and that is Surviving the Angel of Death, the true story of a Mangala twin in Auschwitz, by Ava Moses Kaur and Lisa Rojani Buccieri. Kaur is the one that was, uh, who uh, had to endure the Holocaust. And uh, if you know enough about Dr. Joseph Mengele, he was a diabolical doctor. He was probably your quintessential eccentric, deadly uh, doctor who uh, was more fascinated about uh, the experimentalism that came uh, in treating the uh, uh, Jewish prisoners. And uh, he had a great fascination with twins because he wanted to just about dissect them into uh, figuring out what kind of contrast uh, he can get out of them. Uh, and 
it was just some outrageous uh, fascination of his, and he ended up uh, going to, uh, he ended up uh, making his way to South America in order to uh, hide from uh, being captured and taken prisoner. But in this case, uh, Ava Moses Kaur talks about her experiences and how she decided to uh, take a direction of uh, positivity uh, and uh, forgiveness. Uh, she happened to come to the uh, uh, library uh, in my county, and I was not able to go, but my friend Faith uh, was able to attend, and she was nice enough to uh, get me a, a signed copy, uh, and in exchange I gave her the copy that I had of this book. Uh, and it says here, uh, To Josh, forgive and heal, and then she signed it and dated it which was really uh, incredible. I'm really looking forward to uh, reading this and learning about her experience. The next book that I will be reading is going to be my longest work of the month. Uh, and uh, I didn't think it was as long as, uh, I, as uh, it really is, but... I still want to get to it anyway, and that is The Adventures of Augie March by Saul Bellow. I purchased uh, the complete uh, Library of America collections uh, that feature his works. Uh, I got all four of them, and uh, I remember having a, uh, a discussion with Larry about... Uh, Larry made the argument that The Grapes of Wrath was the great American novel, and when we were talking about it and he brought it up, uh, he later uh, decided to uh, send a list of uh, what really defines the great American novel and, all, and everything that had been the great American novel. One of them that I saw on the list was The Adventures of Augie March, and it really attracted my attention, and I decided I'm going to go forward with it. It'll be my long read for the month. And from what I get out of it, the novel is simply about a uh, young Jewish man growing up in Chicago and uh, searching for his piece of the American dream. And it really uh, picked up attention during the uh, uh, post-Second World War, and in a way it really helped... Uh, Saul Bellow established his voice in American literature, despite the fact that Bellow himself uh, was born in Canada and but came to America to establish his uh, writing career. And if I have time during the rest of the month, uh, I plan to pick up uh, a uh, noteworthy uh, comic. Uh, and uh, this is something that my friend Dan uh, let, uh, let me uh, borrow. And that is uh, Batman the Killing Joke, uh, which was written by Alan Moore, and there was also uh, contributions from uh, Brian Boland and John Higgins. Uh, but this is uh, deemed to be one of the most uh, noteworthy Batman comics, and I also heard that there is a lot of uh, background information about the Joker, and we get a greater understanding as to how he uh, came to be, and uh, his uh, a greater uh, in-depth look at uh, him as uh, perhaps the most uh, noteworthy uh, Batman villain. This is my TBR for the month of January. Let's see how well I do. Usually January is a pretty decent reading month. Uh, probably a lot of that has to do with the fact that it is cold out, and... Uh, I do not want to uh, go outside. I'd rather uh, cuddle up inside and read a book. But we also have the uh, NFL football playoffs taking place. And for the first time since 2011, and their magnificent Super Bowl run, the Giants are in the playoffs. So there's that to look forward to. 
Thank you for tuning into this video. I hope you have a magnificent reading year. And as always, I encourage you to keep reading.